Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Two distinct aerostat-based surveillance systems are the Tethered Aerostat Radar System, TARS, and the J-Lens. Both offer the advantage of extended surveillance and detection capabilities over traditional ground-based radar systems. The aerostats can remain aloft for extended periods, sometimes up to several weeks or months, providing a cost-effective means of continuous monitoring over a wide area. JLENS operates at higher altitudes, providing a wider surveillance area, making it suitable for broader air and missile defense purposes. Preparation, launch, and use of aerostats, like those used by the 2nd Multi-Domain Effects Battalion and 2nd Multi-Domain Task Force during exercises like Arcane Thunder 23, involve a well-coordinated process. Aerostats are complex systems, and their deployment requires careful preparation. This includes assembling and testing the aerostat, ensuring the radar and surveillance equipment function correctly, and conducting safety checks. The aerostat is inflated with helium to achieve the desired buoyancy and altitude. Tethering cables are attached to the aerostat and secured to the ground station. Once the aerostat is properly inflated and tethered, it is launched into the air. This may involve using winches or other equipment to guide its ascent. At the ground station, there is a control center where operators oversee the aerostat's operations. This control station is equipped with computers, communication systems, and the necessary controls for managing the aerostat. To maintain the desired altitude, the operators use winches and cables to adjust the tension on the tether. Operators continuously monitor the altitude to ensure the aerostat remains at the desired height. Engineers and operators monitor camera feeds to gain real-time situational awareness of the area under surveillance. This can include monitoring for potential threats, tracking the movement of enemy forces, or assessing the security of an area. Engineers analyze the camera feeds to provide critical information for decision makers. Maintenance of an aerostat system like the Persistent Threat Detection System is crucial to ensure its continued operational effectiveness and safety. Defense contractors like Lockheed Martin would have a team of skilled technicians and engineers responsible for the maintenance of the PTDS at locations like Al-Assad Air Base. Maintenance personnel must account for environmental factors, so inspections may include checking for damage from weather conditions. The system checks indicator radars, infrared cameras, and ground control systems to ensure all sensors are functioning correctly and calibrated for optimal performance. 
Tethers need regular inspections to identify any signs of wear or damage that could compromise the system's integrity, and periodic top-offs of helium are required in order to maintain the desired altitude and buoyancy. Research on blimp swarming conducted by the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory represents a fascinating exploration into the development of autonomous systems that can operate in coordinated groups, mimicking natural swarm behaviors. It involves studying how a group of autonomous agents, in this case, miniature blimps, can interact and coordinate their actions without central control. NRL flew a fleet of 30 miniature autonomous blimps programmed to respond to each other's movements and adapt to changing conditions while in flight. Researchers plan to scale up the swarming behavior to involve as many as 10,000 autonomous systems. Commercial companies in the U.S. have been making great use of blimps for decades. Perhaps the most recognizable airship in the world is the Goodyear blimp. The Goodyear blimp is an iconic brand of airships that has been associated with the Goodyear tire and rubber company for decades. It is best known for its use in advertising and promotional activities. It has been a flying billboard for the Goodyear brand and other sponsors, displaying their logos and messages at major events. While often called blimps, Goodyear's airships are technically semi-rigid airships. Unlike blimps, which are entirely filled with helium and maintain their ship from internal pressure, semi-rigid airships have a structural framework that helps maintain their shape. The envelope is typically made of a durable material, such as synthetic fabric coated with a gas impermeable layer, often neoprene or polyurethane, to hold the helium or other lifting gas. Its internal framework that helps maintain its shape is made of lightweight materials like aluminum or composite materials being assembled within the envelope to provide structural support. The airship is equipped with engines or propellers for propulsion and control surfaces, such as rudders and elevators for maneuverability. These systems are installed on the gondola and connected to the framework and envelope. During the flight, the pilot and crew are responsible for managing the airship's systems and ensuring safe operation. They control the blimp's movement using propulsion and control systems which may include engines or propellers and rudders for steering. An airplane would have a control yoke, so another difference with the blimp is we have a wheelchair. It almost looks like a, you know, it almost looks like a wheelchair, but it's a wheel on the ground. 
As the world transitions to more cost-effective and environmentally friendly energy initiatives, airships are once again being considered for commercial travel. Airlander is a hybrid airship, meaning it incorporates features of both traditional airships and airplanes. It has a streamlined body, multiple compartments filled with helium for buoyancy, and wings that provide lift. Its first flight took place at Cardington Airfield, which has a history of airship development and testing dating back to the early 20th century. The inaugural flight was a short one, lasting for about 19 minutes. It was primarily a demonstration of the airship's basic flight capabilities, including takeoff, maneuverability, and landing. The cabin interior, designed by Design Q, provides a sense of spaciousness and comfort with open floor plans and a well thought out layout that maximizes available space. The hot air balloon, as known today, owes much of its development to the Montgolfier brothers, Joseph Michel and Jacques Etienne, who were paper manufacturers in France. Over the years, such aircraft were used for scientific purposes, including atmospheric studies and meteorological observations as well as for military reconnaissance purposes. Hot air ballooning experienced a resurgence in the mid-20th century as a recreational and sporting activity. Today, hot air balloons are used for both leisure and competitive purposes, and they are a popular form of entertainment and adventure. Designers use specialized software to create patterns and templates, also taking into account the size of the envelope, selecting colors and patterns, and planning for any special features or branding. Its fabric portion is typically made of lightweight, heat-resistant nylon or polyester fabric. The fabric is chosen for its durability and ability to withstand the heat generated by the burner. Large sheets of fabric are cut into specific patterns, which will be sewn together to form the envelope. The cutting process ensures precision and symmetry. Skilled seamstresses and tailors sew the fabric pieces together using specialized sewing machines. The envelope consists of gores, panels, and other components that are stitched together to create the balloon's shape. The balloon envelope includes vents and scoops that help control the ascent and descent of the balloon. These components are carefully integrated into the envelope during the sewing process. The wicker or rattan basket, also known as the gondola, is constructed separately. It is often hand-woven and reinforced for strength and durability. The basket is designed to accommodate passengers, a burner, and fuel tanks. 
the burner system, which produces the heat needed to inflate the envelope and provide lift, is installed in the basket. The burner is connected to propane tanks that are securely mounted within the basket. The envelope, basket, and burner system are all assembled together to create a fully functional hot air balloon. The rigging lines are carefully connected to the basket and any additional equipment, such as instruments for altitude and temperature measurement, are installed. Making a hot air balloon fly begins with inflating the envelope using a fan to blow ambient air into the envelope, partially inflating it. Then, the burner system is ignited, heating the air inside the envelope, causing it to expand and become less dense, creating a buoyant lift and making the balloon ascent. The pilot operates the burner system to control the temperature of the air inside the envelope, either for lifting or landing. Blimps and hot air balloons maintain relevance in modern times, serving various purposes. They offer tourists a serene and unique perspective on the world, are used for eye-catching advertising and promotions, provide stable platforms for aerial surveillance and research, and are environmentally friendly. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.